In this video, we'll have a look at applying textures to our object. But to do that, we'll first have to go through the process of UV mapping. UV mapping is something that a lot of beginners find really frightening, but don't worry, it's really hard. Okay, I'm just kidding. So let's get started. UV mapping is the process of projecting a 2D image, a texture, onto the surface of a 3D model. To do this successfully, we have to map out what parts of the image correspond to what parts of the model. This is done by unwrapping it. At this stage, we imagine that our model is made of paper and that we want to unfold this paper to lay it out flat. To make this easier, we can cut our paper along the edges of our model. These cuts are called seams. So to start UV mapping our barrel, we switch into the UV editing layout. Now here we have two windows that we want to focus on. On the right, of course, we have our 3D viewport. And on the left, we have our UV editor. So this is the 3D view, and this is the 2D surface that we lay out our UVs on. We don't need this panel, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. So first we want to hit tab to go into edit mode. And our barrel is made up of three different pieces. We have the main barrel, and we have two rings. The first thing we want to do is insert some seams. I want to create a seam that separates the top part of our barrel from the sides. So let's hold down Alt and right click in order to select the entire edge loop. We can do the same at the bottom. So let's hold down Shift and Alt and right click. Now we use our quick search by hitting space to search for Mark Seam and let's hit enter. We now see that these edges are marked with red. What I also want to do is create a seam along the side of the barrel. Imagine that we're cutting through the barrel and we're laying out the sides here. It's probably easier to just show you. So let's switch into edge select mode. Let's select all the edges along the barrel here and let's again hit mark seam. So now if we go back into vertex mode, select a single one of these vertices and hit the L key, it's going to select the entire wooden part of our barrel. We then hit U to bring up our UV mapping controls and unwrap. Now this might be really confusing to you in the beginning, but what we see here is the wooden part of our barrel laid flat. Actually, something really cool is that we can go down here and hit this little button. This will now sync our selection between the two windows. So if we deselect and go through and select different parts of our UVs, we can see it selecting different parts of our mesh as well. And so if we use our box selection by hitting B to select the two top parts here, we can see that that is the top part and bottom part of our barrel. And that everything at the bottom of our UV map is actually the sides of our barrel. You can also see that when I select the sides of our barrel, the outer rings here light up as well. That's because these are the places where the sides connect to the top and bottom. And so they are two selected. Now let's switch out of this mode and have a look at our two metal rings. I actually want to unwrap these in much the same way we did the barrel. I want to mark a seam at the top of our rings, let's hit mark seam, and at the bottom of our rings. And I also want to make a cut right through them. So I'll go into edge select mode and select an edge going through both. Again, mark seam. Let's now go back to vertex select, select both our rings and hit U to unwrap. So here we can see four circles. That's the upper and bottom part of each ring and two lines. That's the outer part of our rings. And this is why I'm going to show you something really cool. Because we could just go ahead and use these UVs as is, meaning that we could go ahead and paint on top of them to add color. But this is actually laid out in a really inefficient way. Because right now, each individual side of our ring is using up texture space. And I don't think we're going to have some different textures on each part. Instead, we could use the same texture for both the bottom and top part of both rings. To do that, we select the vertice on one of the rings, hit L to select the entire ring, we then hit G and overlay it on top of one of the other rings. And we keep doing this until all of the rings are overlaid at the same place. So now whatever we put here in our image is going to be displayed on all of the rings. In fact, we can do the same thing with both our bands here. We can select one of them, hit L, then grab it and hit Y to only move it on the Y axis. And there we go. Now we only need to texture one of the rings and it will be applied to both. So let's select these rings and move them up on the Y axis. Let's also move the rest of our rings up here. If we then go ahead and select our entire object in the 3D viewport, we can see that we have plenty of space for our entire model's UVs. In fact, we could go ahead and take the two bottom and top parts of our barrel here and even scale them up a little. Now there's of course a bunch of stuff and advanced techniques that we could use to improve this UV layout. But for now, this is going to work just fine. So let's try overlaying a texture. To do that, we go down here, we hit new. We can give our texture a name. I'm just going to call it 
barrel. You can give it some dimensions. 1024 is plenty for our case. You can give it a base color. Choose whether or not you want transparency on the parts that aren't textures. In our case, we'll just leave that off. And you can choose to generate a texture. If you select blank, your entire texture is going to be black. But we could also go in here and generate, say, a color grid. These are useful for testing your UV layout. So if we hit OK now, we can see a color grid is generated. And if we go to our 3D viewport and change our mode to texture, voila! Our texture is now overlaid on top of our model. This is probably easier to see if we switch out of edit mode. And let's also go back to the default layout. We'll probably need to change back to texture again. So as you can see, our UV map is not perfect. We have a little distortion on our texture. The lines aren't totally straight. We also have a visible seam going down the side of our texture. And you can definitely also see the seam at the top here. But I think for first go at unwrapping an object, you can definitely be proud of it. Now that we've unwrapped our object, it's time to texture it. And there's pretty much a million ways to go about that. Some paint onto the model using software like ZBrush or Mudbox, and some paint onto the 2D layout using some kind of photo editing software like Photoshop, often bundled with Quixel. So texturing is a science in itself. But especially if we're going for a low poly look, it's actually fairly easy. The first thing that I like to do is bake an ambient occlusion map. Ambient occlusion is the sort of shadows you get when two objects intersect. And having Blender automatically calculates this gives a really good base to work off of. So in our default layout, let's go over to the render panel, that's the camera. Let's go into edit mode and select our entire object. Let's go down to where it says bake and the bake mode we want to set to ambient occlusion. If we now hit the bake button, Blender is going to do a bit of calculation and voila, you should now see ambient occlusion on your object. We can see that we have some shadowing here at the top of our barrel and at the edges of our rings. And if we go into our UV editing mode, we can see the texture. Now this texture is just an image and we can open it in any software and play around with it. If you want to add stuff to your barrel in paint, do so. So let's try and export this image out. Let's go to image, save as image. I'm just going to save it into my projects folder. Let's call it barrel.png. Hit save as image. We can then navigate to the place where we saved our image. A good free application for doing texture work is GIMP. Personally, I use Photoshop. So let's just drag in our barrel here. And there's some different stuff we could do with this. I'm just going to begin by adding a curves adjustment and making everything a bit brighter. I'll then go and select text and then add a company name to the side of the barrel. Let's call it Smith and Sons. And yes, I found a Western font for this particular purpose. And let's also have it say something like beer at the top here. So we know what's inside. I'm going to double click this to add a color overlay. And the color I want here is kind of a darker shade of brown, something like that. And I also want to select our text and add an arc. I'll now duplicate the text by hitting Control J, hit Control T in order to be able to rotate it and then drag it down here. And that's pretty much all I want to do for my texture. If you want a texture that looks more like real wood, you can just go on Google, search for a wood texture and overlay it on top of the image. But I like this minimal style. So let's now go File, Save As. We're going to save it again as a PNG. And I'm just going to save it on top of our original file. Hit Yes to replace. I'm going to hit OK. And now when we go into Blender, if it doesn't update right away, we go Image, Reload Image, or hit Alt R. And there we go. We can see that our texture is now overlaid on top of our barrel. Now there's of course a few problems with this. I think the texture is way too big. And I also put the beard tag on the wrong side. So we can very quickly fix that. Let's just take our two beard tags here, move them over. Let's also scale down our font. Also, I probably don't want this to be totally white, but somewhere in between. Again, I'm going to save that and in Blender hit Alt R. And there we go. Congratulations on texturing your first object. Oh, and remember to save. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in April and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Calhoun, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies.